In this video, we'll talk about high-dimensional geometry. In particular, we'll talk about the arrangement of n hyperplanes in d dimensions. A hyperplane in d dimension is given by a linear equality. It is essentially the set of points in the d dimensions that follow a linear equality. In two dimensions, a hyperplane is given by a line. In three dimension, a hyperplane is uh, is a plane, and so on. In general, in d dimensions, a hyperplane is a d minus one dimensional subspace. If we have n hyperplanes, then we can identify the following set of objects created by these hyperplanes. Intersection of d hyperplanes defines a vertex. So in 2D, a vertex is the intersection of two lines. In three dimensions, a vertex is the intersection of three planes, and so on. Notice that also a vertex is a zero dimensional object. Next, we can define an edge. Intersection of d minus 1 hyperplanes defines an edge. In 3D, the intersection of two hyperplanes defines one edge. And notice that edge is a one dimensional object. In general, we can have a J face, which is the intersection of d minus j hyperplanes, and it's a j dimensional object. Basically, a vertex is a zero face, an edge is a one face, and so on. A d minus 1 face is called a facet. This is the part of the arrangement that only lies on one hyperplane. So in 2D, a facet will be, the, uh, will be an edge. However, in 3D, a facet will be a two-dimensional object, because it has d minus one dimensions, and it will, be, uh, it will look like a plane, basically. And finally, we have cells. So cells are zero-dimensional, uh, so d-dimensional objects that they, they lie on zero hyperplanes. And in particular, you can define cells as the pockets that are created uh, in between these hyperplanes in d-dimensional in space. Um, so in 2D, for example, this gray area is a cell. And in this picture, in 3D, you have eight cells, four above the blue hyperplane and four below the blue hyperplane. So given these definitions, the first thing we'd like to prove relates to the number of cells created in an arrangement of n hyperplanes in d dimensions. For now, I'm going to assume general position. This means I assume that every two hyperplanes intersect there are uh, no parallel lines uh, or no parallel hyperplanes, um, and there are no d plus 2 hyperplanes that intersect as a vertex, or d plus 1 hyperplanes that intersect as an edge, and so forth. In such an arrangement of uh, hyperplanes in d dimension, the first claim that I would like to prove is the following, that in two dimensions, if you have n lines in general position, they will create n times n plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1 regions or cells. The proof is using induction. First, we can easily verify this for n equals 1. If n equals 1, then we have two regions only, above the line and below the line. So this equality holds for n equals 1. So let's look at n equals uh, n bigger than 1. I'm going to assume that it holds for n minus 1 lines. So let's look at the last line. For example, the blue line in the picture. This nth line intersects all the previous lines because we assume general position. And thus there are n minus 1 intersections, one for every each previous line. These n minus 1 intersections create n new cells. In the picture, these two intersections create three different cells, or th uh, three new cells. So if you write a recurs recursive formula, you can see that the number of regions, cells, created by n, uh, n lines in two dimensions equals the number of regions created by n minus 1 lines plus n. And if you work out this uh, recursion with the space case, you will see the, that the claim is, is, is true. I'm not going to do the math here because I'm going to prove something even more general. We would like to claim that in d-dimensional space, the formula for the number of uh, cells in, in, a D, in, an, in an arrangement is the following formula. The proof is again using induction, but it's a slightly more complicated. We single out the last hyperplane, for example, the blue hyperplane. By our general position assumption, this hyperplane intersects all the previous hyperplanes. Now, if you look at this uh, hyperplane as a d minus one dimensional object, all the other hyperplanes intersect this hyperplane and they create d minus two dimensional objects on this hyperplane. For example, in this picture, you will see that 
uh, the previous hyperlinks create vertices, which are two n minus two dimensional objects. And in general, you will have n minus two dimensional hyperplanes lying on inside this d minus one dimensional hyperplane, which is Hn. By our induction assumption, those d minus two dimensional hyperplanes will create this many regions on this d minus one dimensional hyperplane Hn. Every such cell uh, on Hn will be creating a new cell in the d dimensional space. A cell on Hn will be these regions and each such region will be adjacent to one new region in the d-dimensional space. So just to, re to reiterate, the cells that are created on Hn have dimension d-1 because that's the same as the dimension of Hn and every such cell will be creating a new cell, a new d-dimensional cell in the d-dimensional space. Thus, we have the following recursion, that uh, the number of uh, uh, cells created in d-dimensional space equals the number of cells created in d-dimensional space using one less uh, hyperplane plus the number of cells created in d-1 dimensional space using n-1 hyperplanes. We would like to show that this recursion solved to this formula. To do that, we simply need to verify the following equality, that if you write um, phi of n in d-dimensional space as this, which it, it, it is equal to these two summations. To verify this equality, we simply need to use the following uh, equality. That, uh, and if we, if we have the following equality, this, uh, the equality on the left can be easily verified. First, observe that choosing 0 from n minus 1 is the same as choosing 0 from n, so these two terms are equal to 1. And for the remaining terms, we like to claim that this plus this equals this, and so on. And finally, we say that this term plus this term equals this term, which, uh, which will be true if we, can, if we can prove the equality on the right. To prove the equality on the right, we can use a simple combinatorial argument. The term on the right-hand side is a number of ways we can pick i plus 1 items out of n items. So let's assume these dots represent our n items. I would like to pick n i plus 1 items out of them. So I can consider two cases. I can consider the first object and I can say either I select the object or I don't select the object. If I don't select this object, then it remains that I pick i, I plus 1 items out of the remaining n minus 1 items. And this term counts how many ways I can do that. But if I select the first item, then I need to select i items out of the remaining n minus 1 items. And this term counts how many ways I can do that. And it's obvious that if you add these two different ways of picking i plus 1 items, then I can count all the possible ways of picking i plus 1 items out of n items. So this equality uh, can be easily verified using this argument.